As we try to come to terms with Ireland's water problems like flooding, supply and charges, it's easy to forget how lucky we are when compared to other parts of the world. More than 3.4 million people die each year from water, sanitation and hygiene related causes. 99% of those deaths occur in the developing world. Even in countries like Uganda, with two rainy seasons and where water is relatively plentiful, the quality of the drinking water is still a major issue. The Ugandan ministry estimates that 11 million people, that's 30% of the population, have no access to safe drinking water. Many live close to open sewers, just like this one. And this figure may well be far larger, particularly in the rural areas. Professor Kevin McGuigan from the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland has been working for more than 20 years on converting dirty water to clean water. It's called the SODAS Project. The SODAS Project is based in the rural district of Makondo in central Uganda and has been trialled in 15 primary schools which are relying on very poor quality water. This is the only water source that the entire area have. If they don't have harvested rainwater, or, or a pump, this is what they're relying on. So the school was using this very turbid water from the open dug well, and it's very heavily contaminated. Today it is very clean. That's uh, clean today? Today it is clean. It becomes black. When they drink this, this water, they become sick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some as they become absentism because of this water. Okay, so they can't go to school? If yes. Getting sick. Yes. yes. One mother explains that sometimes her children get so sick that they have to go to hospital. She has had to take out loans to cover the cost of the transport and treatment and even now has unpaid bills from her last visit. Kevin and his team have been working on a revolutionary solution to prevent the diseases which occur from drinking this dirty water. It works equally well even when the water looks completely clean. Here in Makondo, the project has funded the building of tanks to harvest rainwater from the two rainy seasons. However, this water is still contaminated by the faeces of birds and other wild animals and is unsafe to drink. The SODAS project has the most deceptively simple solution to make this water safe and it uses a totally free resource that Africa has in abundance the sun. Kevin, this is all where it happens then. So tell me, what are the two different types of water that we have here? OK, well, this is the water from the well at the bottom of the hill that you, you saw. Uh, that's high, highly turbid. And this is the water from the harvested rainwater tank. So the harvested rainwater tank, that will be disin solar disinfected very quickly, maybe about two hours or so. This takes longer. It, it looks simple, but there's, there's real science taking place. What's happening is the UV is damaging the membranes of the microbial pathogens. So the membranes start to become very leaky. Now they have repair mechanisms that should be able to, to stop that, but as the water temperature increases, those repair mechanisms become less and less effective. So really what you're getting is very badly sunburned microbes and very slowly pasteurized cells. So the combined double effect means they become completely inactivated. So leaving the water in a clear plastic container disinfects it and makes it potable. We've never found a pathogen that is not susceptible to the solar disinfection. It's amazing. This is a, a project funded by Irish Aid uh, through the Higher Education Authority, and they targeted Uganda as a country of specific need. Jacent, how are you? We've been working with Dr. Jacent Asimwe. She was my PhD student, but she qualified quite recently. And she's the person who has been out in the field, taking the samples, bringing them here to Macararia and getting them analysed. Uh, so this is one of the samples that we've gotten from the field. It's pretty disgusting, isn't it? In a sample of clean drinking water that's fit for human consumption, we wouldn't expect to see any growth. Now, in the case of the sample that we got from the field, this is what we got. And what kind of diseases does that represent? In this plate, the blue colonies represent E. coli and the maroon ones represent E. fecalis. That shows that the water has been contaminated with feces. Solar disinfection works by exposing the water to the sun and 
This is what the water looked like initially before we treated it at all. This is what we got after two hours of treatment. So you can already see that it's cleaner. Yes. This is what we got after four hours of exposure. This is what we got after six hours of exposure. And this was after seven hours. And so just after seven hours in the sun, the dirty water has become safe. Yes. That is amazing. It is. And if you compare the treated water to our control, that is what we'd expect clean water, I mean safe water to look like. This is what it is almost in the, you know, they look alike, there's no growth at all, which means the, safe, the water is safe microbiologically to drink. Having proved the effectiveness of the solar disinfection, a key element of Jacent's PhD research was introducing this technology out into the rural communities. And we wanted to use the school children as ambassadors for this technology back into the community. So we trained the kids at school, but we hoped that they would take this technology back to their parents and the general community. Hello. Hello. You are most welcome. Julius, where did you get this water from? We get water from the tank. We could, yeah, because the program gave us mm -hmm. that tank, and that's where we collect water. Jacinth. It's wonderful to see the school children so involved in this programme. Yeah. But I just wanted to know, is there any danger in leaving the water out in plastic bottles for this length of time? No, not. From the research that we've done, we've found out that water that is exposed under the sodis method is quite safe because you expose it today and you drink it the next day, mm -hmm. so the water doesn't stay in the bottle for quite a long time. And are they using the bottles at home? Yes, please. We gave them bottles to use them home. One remains home, then they bring it, uh, they bring one here. Mm. As they take the empty bottle, they also bring that, that they expose ah. the other day. Yeah. So every day they're bringing a bottle in and keeping one at home? Yeah, yes, please. Do you think, was it difficult to convince people that only by leaving water out in the sun, you were making it potable? We thought everyone was going to be enthusiastic about this project, apparently not so. Some teachers were not as cooperative as we thought they would be, until I had to show them my lab results because I would take the water that they were drinking from the wells and the water that was treated by the sun and on my next trip back to the field, I would come with these plates and I would show them, look, this is the water you were drinking and this is what, you had, what we treated and I tested them both and this is what we have. So after some time, they began to, to, to believe what I was saying. Luckily here in Uganda, the project has worked successfully so far, but in itself, that's not sufficient. You need to get backing from the governments of the countries where you're running these projects so that they will support it not only during the project, but afterwards, so you can disseminate the results and maybe uh, scale it upwards over larger areas. I feel very lucky that my project has, you know, had such an impact, but at the same time, I feel proud that I could bring this technology, I could convince these people and they could take it up so enthusiastically. And teachers telling me students are no longer, you know, absenting themselves from school. The parents, you ask them and they say they no longer see their children falling sick. It makes me feel proud. Well, this has been an absolutely fascinating trip and it's really brought home to me how much we take water for granted at home. But isn't it wonderful that research happening in Ireland is having a benefit to people's lives here in rural Africa?